Purchase your copy of TurboCAD from CADCourse.net. Okay, so you've recently come off a very successful version 14 release. Uh, do you, can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, how's, how's it been received and um, uh, how are you feeling about it? Uh, we're feeling very good about it. I think uh, you know, certainly on the, on the sales side, we're, we're, we're doing better than our past releases. And I think just on the product uh, side, if, if I contrast that with the version 12 or version 11 releases, for example, there's... It's it's nothing. It's been pretty much, but nothing but good feedback, positive feedback. We haven't had the uh, the problems associated. I don't believe with the XF and the DWG compatibility, and just in terms of overall product stability. I think it's uh, you know, and listening to the feedback from user firms and it just in general, the feedback has been very very positive. Let's let's briefly discuss that whole uh, DWG uh, DXF import thing. Uh, you guys are part of the Open Drawing Alliance and uh, are, are very influential in that. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I don't know how influential we are. I mean, we, we're we're active participants, and and our CTO Moritz Bota, uh, who has who's been with IMSI for the past five plus years, is actually now in the management uh, of the. The ODA. So, obviously, he he does in, exert some influence. I think he, he and Arnold von der Weide have helped really organize the ODA in the last year, make it more of a, a professional organization. They've had their issues. I think Arnold and, and Moritz have both given some structure and organization to it, both administratively, but certainly from a development perspective as well. So that's good for us and, of course, all ODA members. Uh, there was a little bit of a scandal going on with the ODA there. What was, what was that all about, and has that all been resolved? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, it's all been resolved. It, it involved um, some work that the ODA had done with, I guess, their, their file import on DWG, and it related to the warning message that Autodesk was incorporating into AutoCAD when you imported a... DWG file that had not come from AutoCAD, that it gave you a warning message that this was not a legitimate DWG file. And um, the ODA had a way to circumvent that messaging. I believe that was what the, the lawsuit was over. In any event, it was it was ultimately resolved between the two parties. And so as, as far as I know, there's there's no issues on the, on the table. So, so that lawsuit is not, uh, it's been discontinued now? Right, there was a settlement. I know that oh, I the see. ODA agreed to do certain things, and, and Autodesk uh, agreed to do certain things, and so uh, that that ODA, uh, excuse me, that lawsuit is no longer happening. That actually wasn't what I was talking about. It was. Oh. Uh, I remember there was some kind of fraudulent uh, accounting activity going on, and uh, I recall one of the accountancy guys uh, actually was uh, under investigation or something like that. Do you recall that? Yeah, there was there was actually, I guess one of their bookkeepers had allegedly defrauded the ODA of some amount of money, and then when they started the ODA started to look into it, it was like peeling back the layers of the onion and, and found other problems in just the overall running of the uh, the company, and you know how could a problem like this have gone on for so long without people knowing it, and that sort of led to a wholesale cleaning up of the uh, the bylaws and, and the organization of the ODA. All right. And uh, so those guys continue to supply very good libraries for the translation of DWG. And this is what you have integrated in uh, TurboCAD, and it continues to get upgraded. So the latest compatibility with AutoCAD is uh, 2007, I believe. Uh, 2007 slash 2008, as far as we can see, that the file format for 2008 has not been materially changed from 2007. So we're touting uh, 2008 compatibility as well. So Bob, if you could tell us a little bit about uh, the future direction of TurboCAD 14 and uh, specifically the different uh, the add-on pack technology, I know we've broken it up into a basic uh, architectural and a mechanical type pack. Can you talk a little bit about that, please? Sure. We started that uh, with TurboCAD 12, as most of you know, and we did that because we see TurboCAD sort of, uh, without creating a, a, a pro-mechanical and pro-architectural version, we see our, our users being in those, those two camps, and so 
for someone who's interested in doing mechanical design, there certainly may be features on the architectural side that they're just not going to be interested in and, and vice versa. And so what we started to do in version 12 is to create these packs of the more sophisticated tools on uh, either side there. So in 14, for example, uh, we, we added uh, branched lofting um, and we added uh, face-to-face lofting and, and uh, some mechanical other, uh, we added a flange, a two bend, and a two bend and extend. And those things we put into our mechanical pack and we think that that's, that's the way it should be because someone who's designing houses really doesn't care about that sort of functionality. And the flip side of things, uh, we added schedules to the, our architectural pack. We added um, parametric stairs and rails, and we added um, terrain, a terrain feature, which is sort of a new thing for us. Kind of excited about that. So what I would say for the future is to look, look for more of that, that you know, the TurboCAD Pro itself will be positioned it's sort of in the middle of the CAD world, and we will do certainly mechanical and architectural enhancements to that 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 part. But the real, the, the big enhancements in each of those camps will come in the form of these packs that we we offer in addition to the base product. And we try and price these packs at a, a relatively modest price, so that it becomes an easy decision to, you know, if you're in the mechanical design world, to take. Uh, the mechanical pack. All right. Now, certainly TurboCAD uh, for users who don't know is one of the is the leading retail uh, CAD applications, and uh, what you have on the shelf typically a product called TurboCAD Designer and, and TurboCAD Deluxe. Uh, will, will any of these add-on packs work with those products, or are those? No, they, they they're strictly add-ons to the Pro product. The, the deluxe play and certainly the designer play are what I call retail or consumer products. Uh, obviously, what we try and do is migrate a uh, percentage of our uh, deluxe and designer users to take pro, but the, the really the, the add-ons, the plugins, those are specific to the pro product. Oh, I see. And so now the the add-ons are they how are they being getting created? Are they using the SDK add-on technology, or what what's going on there? Yes, I mean TurboCAD has an SDK. It's that's actually one of our sort of the big initiatives for the next year in terms of strategy. Is we need to put a lot of effort and energy in bringing our SDK. Uh, you know, up to speed with the application itself. That is, expose more of the functionality in the program, document that properly, give some good code examples, and that's uh, one of the, the key development initiatives that uh, our CTO Maritz Bota is pursuing now. So, you know, for the future, you can you can look to see some real improvements there. And, and why do we want to make improvements? Because we want to encourage more and more third-party developers to to create plugins. Add-ons to the TurboCAD platform. Right now, we have a handful of those, and we'd like to turn that handful into into dozens. And I think most of us recognize that that was one of the hallmarks to Autodesk's success with AutoCAD. Is they very successfully encouraged third-party development and have had a, a very robust SDK. Uh, so that's that's our our goal as well. Purchase your copy of TurboCAD from CADCourse.net.